a wool and cotton blend. It's not 100% wool. Um, it's cheaper to produce. I believe I was always under the impression that before the war it was more or less a sled cloth. It's inferior to 100% wool, cheaper to produce, and that's what the uh, Confederate government was cranking out. You notice a lot of us are wearing the same style jacket, um, five button jacket, outer breast pocket, blue collar. He's got one, he's got one, I've got one. They don't, they don't play along. Um, yeah. <laughs> produced a uh, later, later part of the war, 64, 65 time frame um, for the department, of, it's known as the Department of Alabama jacket, but it shows up, I want to say five or six times worn by guys that were in this siege, in this uh, campaign, either here or at Spanish Fort. Uh, the original jackets that survived the war and moths and all that 150 some odd years ago. So for that part, they're mostly identical. They have some variances, but when, what they were doing was they weren't producing these things in a big, huge factory. What they would do is they would cut kits, they would send them home to women um, and men tailors at home they would produce the jackets, they would turn them into the government, and then they would get their pay. So you would have slight variations. It's funny, the three of us were having a conversation about that last night. Um, just because the pattern calls for something, everybody's talents and skill sets are different, even back then when everybody knew how to sew. So you'd have a sleeve that's inside out, you'd have a jacket that ended up having five buttonholes cut out, that kind of thing. Um, trousers, kind of the same deal. Trousers, pants are pants. Shoes, uh, you got, you got British shoes? No, they're Confederate copies of them. He's wearing Confederate copies of a British pattern shoe known as the Blue. 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 Um, <clears throat> Confederates imported a lot of stuff from Great Britain, but they also copied a lot of stuff from Great Britain. So you can't immediately get the shoes, but wow, they look nice. Let's make them look like British shoes. What do you got? What do you got? Uh, civilian contact. C civilian type shoes, mm -hmm. yeah. Low quarter. Um, mm -hmm. Can't, uh, y'all are about that. You see, he's wearing a federal canteen in the early part of the war when the Confederacy was really knocking it out in the Eastern Theater. Um, as far as victories and whatnot, they were, you know, they would come after the battle and they'd pick up all this, you know, discarded items. They had a lot of captures early in the war, and then they would just cycle it out to their own troops. This is a smooth side canteen made by the hundreds of thousands in, in Yankee workshops, factories. Uh, Private Black is wearing a Confederate tin drum canteen. You see these in all years of the war in all the major theaters of operation. He's not wearing a haversack. I think he left his over there. This is where you kept your food. You don't carry, you don't carry matches in your pipe and wallet and all that. That's disgusting. You have bacon and coffee and whatever else they issued you. That's like a <coughs> McDonald's bag on the on the battlefield. I, mean, I put my wallet in a McDonald's bag, but that's not ideal. Um, you have a leather cartridge box, they're both wearing those. This is standard stuff on both sides of the, of the, of the Civil War. Minor variations, they, uh, but it's basically the same deal. He's wearing an imitation product that was come up, come up with during the Civil War. I believe it started in the Civil War. Painted cloth, it mimics leather. Standing down there, you can't tell it's painted cloth, but it looks like leather. It's cheap to produce, just like the cloth uh, the garments are made out of. The headwear, civilian in nature, and also issued out by the government. Uh, bayonet scabbards are the same, they're both leather, produced by the, probably millions by the Confederate government. What about uh, 